thank you for having me here today. Uh, I am just so happy to be standing here this time in front of you in this moment. God is good? And all the time. Amen. Um, I want to especially thank your pastor, your spiritual leader, Dr. Uh, McGee. I know he's not here today, but uh, him and the clergy, they're leading a fabulous congregation, a congregation that's rich in ancestors and, and, and history dating back 140 years. I'm highly impressed with that. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the congregation for appearing here today and being here with me to hear my message and my word. I want to thank Karen for inviting me to come, that she saw that I might have something powerful and, and, and positive to say. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if anybody ever stops getting nervous when you're excited about something. And I think that's what you were, you were dealing with because you know how to deal with people on a day to day. And so just think of one times a couple of hundred, that's all. <laughs> Um, I want to especially thank my family for being here, my husband, my kids. You guys saw them stand earlier. That's my mother and my nephew. So thank you for coming. There's nothing like family support. Amen? Amen. All right. And then I also have a support team with me. My publicist is here today, Bridget, Joe, and my videographer, uh, uh, Jeff. So thank you so much for being here. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, I was asked to speak to help kick off next week's activities, which is the Women's Day Conference. So my speech is here mainly, um, my message is mainly to talk about our young women in your congregation, but I think everybody can benefit from what I have to say today. So we, uh, there's no way uh, since uh, Maya Angelou just passed, and she knows everything about a phenomenal woman, there was no way I couldn't bring this message to you without at least quoting an excerpt from that. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees, I say. It's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally phenomenal woman. That's me. As I look around this congregation today, I'm sure Maya Angelou had to be a fly on the wall at some point because she had to be inspired by the women in this very room when she wrote this piece, I must say that. Um, I know we are amongst mixed company, but I do feel privileged to be speaking about Trinity's phenomenal women. Women stepping out of the past into the future. Let me say that again. Trinity's phenomenal women. Women stepping out of the past into the future. Okay, now let's break this statement down. If you did a simple Google definition of phenomenal, you would find that the word means highly exceptional, prodigious. Similar word choices to phenomenal would be uncommon. So obviously we know that's not the usual, that's not the norm, right? More than average. Outstanding, more than best with greatness. Surpassing, over and beyond. Unprecedented, you know, never having been done before, you know, setting the standard, raising the bar. When talking about women, of course, means all of us grown females here in church, but particularly I'm looking at those in the ages of uh, 18 to 35. Where are you in the room? Can you please stand for me? Where are my females? Can you stand for me? If it's the age 18 to 35, where are you? Okay, that's who's here today. Okay, so all of this message, all of the power of this message lays on the two shoulders right here, right now today. <laughs> Thank you so much for standing. See, the, the 18 to 35 year olds, that's the ones, those are the ones that are highly energized, they're technically savvy, they're very socially conscious, and they have the energy to, more than we have today. So that's the generation that's gonna be able to go forward and really uh, get some things done right now, right? So that's what I'm particularly talking to, and that's the ones we wanna get involved in the church. Stepping out means moving, whether forward or upward, moving in a positive direction. The past is what's behind you, where you came from, old news, what we may not remember or what we may never forget. But the future, the future, now see, I don't know about your future, but my future is bright. I gotta put sunglasses on for my future is so bright. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how bright it is. And when you have a bright future, it brings about the boom effect. Now, are y'all familiar with the boom effect? Anybody? Okay, I'm gonna tell you what the boom effect is. We're gonna practice. When I point, 
Everybody in here with all your energy has to say, boom. All right, we're gonna practice this one time. About to point, what y'all gonna say? Boom. Pointing. Boom. All right, here we go. <laughs> all right, boom effect. The future is about things to come. Boom. The future is about people to meet. Boom. The future is about places to go. Boom. The future is about goals to meet. Boom. The future is about money to make. Boom. The future is about life to live. Boom. The future is about breath to take. Boom. The future is about gifts to give. Boom. The future is about moves to make. Boom. And the future is about trusting the Lord and taking leaps of faith. Boom. That's the boom effect. All right, so when you go through life, you got to stay highly motivated to know that those are the kind of things that you're going to do into the future, right? Boom effect. Let me tell you guys a little bit about my background. For those of you who don't know me, I am a graduate of Xavier University in New Orleans. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science and a minor degree in mass communications. I'm very involved in the entertainment industry, and I have been involved in performing arts since I was a little girl. I... I got involved in the entertainment industry professionally as an actress in 1990, and I've been doing all kinds of stuff since then. Uh, I knew I needed to feed myself, <laughs> so I decided to go to law school, and I graduated from law school and took the bar and been practicing law since 1994. Uh, I'm a businesswoman, the artistic director of a performing arts nonprofit, an entertainment lawyer, playwright, producer of film and theater, and a working actress. And so for the last 25 years or so, being in the entertainment business in various capacities, I've learned a lot and I've done a lot. As a counselor and attorney at law, my very nature and training is to teach, persuade, advise, share information, assess the pros and cons of a situation and give my legal opinion. But with all of that, all the credentials and the, the knowledge and the experience I have, there was a time that I felt very uncomfortable sharing unsolicited advice with industry peers. And I'm gonna tell you why. I was raised in New Orleans, and then I moved here for law school. So after graduating from college and getting here, you know, I'm, eight, what am I, like 18, 19 years old, very happy-go-lucky, um, very, very friendly and, and naturally helpful. So since I had been here for a little while, for law school that first year, I learned a number of things about the city, you know, where to live, what part of town you should be in, how far places are from school, et cetera, et cetera. Well, one of my male classmates asked me to give my opinion about where, where he might live, you know, what apartment I think is best for him, et cetera. So I started to tell him all these different things about what I know about Houston, and at that time, the place to live was West Belford and Fondren area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A long time ago. <laughs> uh, um, and so another classmate of mine, a female classmate of mine, overheard the conversation. I didn't know that at the time. Now the female classmate later, she and I became very, 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 very good friends. Well, sometime after law school, she confided in me and she said, you know, I'm glad we're best friends now, but there was a time I really didn't like you. Moi? <laughs> really? <laughs> Who'd have thought? Um, and so she explained why, and what she said was, she thought I was a know-it-all. And she told me about overhearing the conversation that I was having with the classmate about all the apartments and, you know, oh, you should live here, you should live there, and all this other stuff. Okay, so that stuck with me. And as, as little as that is, that goes, that goes to show you what the power of words can do to a person, right? If it stuck with me, just even a little bit. So I thought, well, if my friends thought that of me, what do strangers think? So let's fa fast forward in time. About four years ago, an actress friend of mine called me once out the blue and she was thanking me for just being me and taking the time to share things about what I knew about the entertainment business with those in the business because she thought, well, we don't know everything, you know? I told her, well, I don't always like to talk much about what I do when people don't ask, you know, the things that I know. I always felt like I was a know-it-all in the room, right, since I told her the story about what happened in law school. And so I'm, I'm paraphrasing her. She said, baby, not all of us went to law school and we are all still learning this business. 
The information you give us is very helpful. You know a lot because of all your experience in the business. You are a lawyer, an actress, a writer, and a producer. You have a mixture of talent not everyone has. She told me, you have a gift to share. If I could, I felt like if I could have such a profound impact on my friends, then what could I impress upon the masses? So in other words, you have to release what's holding you back, right? You cannot be phenomenal if you worry about what people have thought about you in the past. You can't be phenomenal if you let your gifts keep you from going into the future. So I had to release my feelings about, you know, being a know-it-all. John 3.16 in part reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The operative word of that passage is the word gave. What did he give? He gave his son. His gift to the world. It is my Christian duty and understanding to give to share my talents, my time, and myself with my community, particularly with our children. Once I understood that, this put me on the path to doing great things that I didn't even imagine. I chose to share my gifts through my nonprofit, Mac Performing Arts Collective, a performing arts organization, Impact for short. Its mission, cultivating the interest of performing arts by exposing, entertaining, and educating our disadvantaged youth and young adults. Realizing I had a gift to share and being an entertainment lawyer, playwright, actress, and producer. I had a circle of high-profile clients, industry colleagues, and contacts ranging from all facets of the entertainment industry. I had resources, often times out of the reach of others, but right at my fingertips. This was my opportunity to give back to my community, to expand the growth of the performing arts industry here at home, and make dreams of our young performers come true. And we all know little boys and little girls that have dreams turn up to turn out to be grown men and women with vision, okay? So I have 10 tips for you. And finding out what your gifts are and, and becoming that phenomenal woman. One, you have to have a belief in God. You have to have faith and know that prayer works, right? Know that when you may be, know that when you may get down to nothing, God is always up to something. I'm telling you, it, it, trying to be somebody in the world, oftentimes there's nobody to talk to when it gets real heavy. And so you got to turn to the Lord. So keep that in mind. Number two, claim it. Whatever it is, whatever your gift, your mission in life, your passion, your legacy to leave behind, claim it. Live in the moment and be consistent and persistent in your efforts to accomplish your goals. Know your power, number three. There's power in being yourself. There's power in who you are. That power may be defined by your education, training, experience, skill, expertise, talent, abilities, access, whatever it is. But know that you have it and then know how to use it once you discover what it is. Number four, work on your dash. Y'all know what the dash is? That dash is the, 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 the line between the date you were born and the date you die. What are you doing in life in between? Okay, so be familiar with your dash. Create your legacy. Do something that benefits others. Do something that you can pass on to others. Do something positive and meaningful that benefits the community and improves others' quality of life. And whatever that is, keep doing it. Number five, avoid the naysayers. Yeah, they're out there. Not everyone will share your dreams or your vision. Not everyone will understand why you do what you do, but you stay the course. To be in the forefront, a leader, a trendsetter, is not easy. And if it was, everybody would be doing it. Then nobody's exceptional and nobody's phenomenal, right? So stay the course. I'll tell you, um, as I trans, I was, I was an actress before I was a lawyer. A lot of people didn't know that. They knew me as a lawyer by the time they met me, right? So there were a lot of things. I started doing a lot more of my acting stuff and commercials and all this other th stuff. And I actually had people come up to me and they would say, why are you wasting your law degree doing that acting stuff? You've been wasting your parents' money. Really? Okay. Well, see, because see how I saw it was, 
no, I'm not wasting my law degree. No, I'm not wasting anybody's money. And I have a dual career. I do more than one thing. And they all relate. In fact, I was able to write a movie, write a play that became a movie, sold the movie rights, which means I put my lawyer hat on to negotiate that contract, and I had an acting role in it. Hello. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Don't listen to those naysayers. You will not get anything done listening to the naysayers. OK. Um, number six, take chances. To be phenomenal, you have to be willing to take chances, to think outside the box, to take a leap of faith, try something new and unconventional. Vision yourself doing phenomenal things, and phenomenal things will happen. Okay? Great things never, ever, ever came from people staying within their comfort zones. If you stay living inside that little box, you don't know what's going on up the street, around the corner, down the block, you know, up ahead. You are just totally missing out, and you will come across people that just don't get it because they've never tried to do anything different, right? Number seven, and I tell this to everyone, especially my kids when they come to our workshops, network, 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 okay? You never stop networking, but, but make sure you network with purpose. Go with a plan. Don't just go to be seen. Make sure you meet the people running the scene, okay? Relationships are everything. Nurture them, you never know when you will need that person and vice versa. Expand your professional circle of influence, but never step on the little guy. Get to know the assistants to the top person because those assistants become the top person, okay? And before you know it, you will have direct access to whoever you need access to. And it is so true because when we do these workshops, I've been able to bring in the likes of these actors workshops we do with Impact. I've been able to bring in the likes of Malik Yoba, Guy Tory for a comedy workshop. We brought in Wendy Raquel Robinson this year. We brought in uh, Golden Brooks from TV show Girlfriends, Gary Owens, all these high profile celebrities that require a lot of money and I don't have a lot of money to give them. But because I have relationships and I networked and I planted seeds with them years prior, I'm able to call them now and say, hey, can you do me this favor? and come and give back to the, to the entertainment industry in the Houston area. So relationships are everything. It helps you, it makes your job easier becoming phenomenal, right? Control the controllable. Do your part. You make good on your promises. You can't control everything about a situation, but you can control how you act or react to that situation. You can control your attitude and your energy. Toss luck. Just toss it out the door. No such thing as luck in business, okay? When I graduated from Xavier University in 90, our president, uh, Dr. Norman Francis, he said, there is no such thing as luck. What luck really is, is where opportunity meets preparedness. I mean, it's that simple, that simple. So always be prepared. When you're networking, you never know who you may meet. You have that business card handy, you know, make sure you have that. Know some talking points about your, bu your business or your project in case you meet some potential investor or some type of resource, some person that could be a possible resource. So always be prepared. Number 10, take care of you, okay? This is a vessel, and this, is, this vessel is what allows me to carry my gift, my gift to share. So men, women, take care of that vessel. Eat right, exercise, be, be prayerful, um, be conscious of our overall appearance. Everything that we need to do to make sure our package is together. Because we all know, folks, the first, when you meet somebody in person, the first thing you see is that physical being, you know? So if you come to me, okay, let's talk, let's talk about hair, hair stylists. Now, I'm wearing a natural now, but when I was wearing my hair perm. If you come to me and your head's all raggedy, I don't know that I want you to do my hair. You know what I mean? You know, uh, you're the nail technician, but yours is all chipped and banged up and everything. I don't know if I want you to do my nails. People look at everything, they just do, can't help it. So just make sure we have our package together. Okay, each woman in here is capable of being phenomenal, if not already. Do or continue to do things that make you highly exceptional, prodigious, uncommon, outstanding, surpassing, and unprecedented. 
I challenge each of you to tap into your gifts, your call of duty, to give and nurture the community in which you live and prosper. And know this, there are two most important days in your life. And that they are the day you were born and the day you know why. Boom. Years to come. So um, thank you on behalf of Reverend McGee and the Women's Day Committee. Uh, in addition to acting, we focus a lot on comedy, so we do a comedy series for the whole month of June, every Thursday in June. So the last one is coming up, in case anybody wants to go. Uh, it's at Club Manhattan, the show starts at 8.30, and we'll have some flyers in the back. And there's a lot, a lot, there's lots of funny comics right out of the Houston area, so this is our opportunity to showcase them, and you guys can see some of the talent that runs around Houston. So check it out when you get a chance and get a flyer. Thank you. <laughs>